This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is we're adding R410A refrigerant into this running air conditioning system because it's very low on refrigerant. We're going to be moving the cameras up close so that you can monitor the pressures and the temperatures as we add the refrigerant coming up. Before we get started, make sure to check out our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book, our 1,000 Question Workbook, and our Quick Reference Cards, all available over at AECServiceTech.com. Now we're going to get into it. Before we connect our hoses and add R4 tonight into this air conditioning system, I want to get the system running. And so we mounted our temp sensors onto the lines. These are K-type temp sensors that have electrical tape on them, so you could use that version or the clamp version. And we also need to go inside the building and make sure we have a clean air filter and then also check the airflow to make sure we have the proper amount for the size unit we have. And we need to determine what type of metering device we have. In this case, we have a thermostatic expansion valve, so we're going to be checking the refrigerant charge using the subcoin method. Before we connect our hoses to the system, we just want to make sure to have these hoses snug on the manifold. We want to make sure to have the handles closed, and we're going to go ahead and connect in. As well, I have the manual low loss valve in the off position right now, and so we're going to connect our high side. This is our red hose on our small liquid line, and we're going to connect our blue hose on our large vapor line. You shouldn't have any refrigerant squirting out if you have new rubber grommets in these hose ends right here, so you got to replace them every once in a while. Now that we have refrigerant pressure in our hoses, we need to purge the air out of this hose right here. And since our pressures are equalized, we're going to open both handles at the same time and we're going to force the air out of this hose. If these were not equalized, we'd open one handle at a time, the blue handle first, then close it, and then the red handle first, and then close it in order to purge our air. So now we have all of the air purged out and there's just refrigerant in this service hose. This is the hose that we're going to connect over to the refrigerant bottle over here. Now we're going to connect our hose onto the bottle. We're going to make sure that this valve remains in the off position. We want to make sure to have this refrigerant bottle upside down because r 4 a has to come out of the bottle as a liquid even though we're going to be charging it into the low pressure side which is vapor. And so right now, this, this is still shut, so we're going to open this up. We're going to purge the small amount of air out down here. And with these handles shut, so you've got to make sure that these are shut first, so they're both shut. Then we're going to open up our tank. After that, we can zero out our scale. So we're in pounds right now, I'm just going to change it over to ounces and make sure it's zeroed out. So you're going to see it fluctuating a little bit because this tank, the liquid inside, is still sloshing around. As well, we'll turn our temp meter on, hopefully you can see that. And we're going to be charging right over here while the system's running, but first we want to turn this system on and let it run for about five minutes uh, before checking the refrigerant charge. We have the indoor air running and now we're going to push our electrical disconnect in and start this unit up. So here we're measuring our high side pressure and here we're measuring our low side pressure. So this is our vapor line which is on our large, large tube. And so we would check our total superheat with these two right here with a temperature here and a pressure here. We're going to be checking mainly subcoin between here and here. And that's because we have a thermostatic expansion valve. If we had a fixed orifice, we would be mainly over on these two uh, and checking our total superheat. So we got to let the system run for about, say, five minutes when you have a, a TXV. The other thing that we want to monitor is we take our pressure on our outer ring on the vapor gauge and we bring that into the pink inner ring that's R4 tonight saturated temperature in the middle of the indoor coil. We want to make sure that that does not drop down below 32 degrees. And you see right now it's about, say, 34 degrees. If it was below 32 degrees, any humidity that's in the air crossing the indoor coil would freeze under that coil and eventually turn it into a solid block of ice. And so if we were down at 32 degrees, we may be extremely low on refrigerant or there could be a liquid lime restriction problem or a low airflow problem, and you can check out other videos that we have on that. So I'm going to let this system run, and then we're going to come back. 
So now it's been about five minutes and on our liquid line we measure a temperature of about 77 degrees and if we were to measure our pressure on that high side line in order to determine our subcooling we have about 226 psi we bring that into the r4 tonight saturated inner ring and we have about 77 degrees so 77 minus 77 and we have zero degrees of subcooling However, up on the outdoor unit reading plate, this unit calls for 9.7 degrees as a target subcoil. So what should happen is this should be higher and this should be lower to give us a spread of about 9.7 or 10 degrees of subcooling. Now let's also just check our uh, superheat, our total superheat. And so we have 50, let's call that 59 degrees. And if we measure our pressure on our large vapor line, we measure about uh, 110 psi or 109 we bring that into the saturated temperature inner ring and we have 35 degrees of the r 4 a saturated temperature in the middle of the indoor coil so we take say 58 minus 35 and we have uh, 23 degrees of superheat so that's of total superheat because we're measuring it at the outdoor unit now a txv should be able to handle a superheat of about say 8 to 14 degrees across that indoor coil so what this is telling us is we have no subcooling, which means that we do not have liquid only heading to the TXV. So we have a little bit of vapor and liquid heading to the TXV, so we need to add refrigerant to this system. So we're going to add a little bit at a time into our low side line. So we do have liquid exiting the tank, and it's coming through this yellow service hose into the manifold, and every time we open this uh, gauge handle up, we're adding R4 tonight into the low side, which is the vapor line. Now that vapor line is heading right to the compressor, so you could add a vaporizer here or at the tank, which would change that liquid to a vapor. Instead, what we're doing is we're metering it a little at a time with our handle right here. And so you see that we have one ounce uh, that the, the scale is monitoring the loss of refrigerant weight in the tank, and we see one ounce so far. We're going to keep adding refrigerant. We know we have no subcooling, so we know we're very low on refrigerant. If you were to just open this handle up and allow liquid to slug that compressor, that could permanently damage that compressor, and therefore you're not going to be having any air conditioning. So you don't want to do that. So you just want to meter a little at a time. So you allow a, a flashing of the liquid into saturated or into vapor before that refrigerant enters that vapor compressor. In this case, we have a, a scroll compressor in that outdoor unit. Now that we added refrigerant in, uh, I'm going to check our subcooling. And we have 78 degrees on our liquid line. And if we checked our pressure and we converted it to the saturated temperature for R4 today, it looks like we have about 79 degrees so we take 79 minus 78 and we have about one degree of subcooling however you should let the the system run for maybe three four minutes before checking the charge again after you add that refrigerant but i do know that we're very low on refrigerant because i was the one that recovered the refrigerant out of here if you leaked that much refrigerant you really need to find the leak uh, before just charging all that refrigerant uh, back in because what's going to happen is it may just leak right out the next day and so it's not doing the customer any good if we're just adding all that refrigerant back in. If it's a little low, uh, then that's one thing, but if it's severely low, we wanna be searching for that refrigerant leak. You know, it could have been that the uh, prior technician just did not know how to charge the system, so it could have just been low on refrigerant just from that prior technician. So if it's the first time that you're arriving at the site, you're kinda trying to do some detective work in order to determine why you're a little low on refrigerant. So we got 10 ounces in so far. So I'm gonna to go to about three quarters of a pound, which is about 12 ounces. And then we're gonna wait a few minutes and check the charge again. All right, I'm gonna pause right here and give the refrigerant a chance to cycle through the system. And then we're gonna check the refrigerant charge again. Remember that when you're adding refrigerant in the field, don't add it necessarily this quick. I am doing it a little quicker just for the sake of the video. 
uh, but you want to add it slower and then check the refrigerant charge again. You just want to make sure to not overcharge the air conditioning system. So it's been about five minutes so far, and if we were to look at the saturated temperature of R410A in the inner ring on the high side gauge, we have a little bit above 80, so maybe 80.5. And over here on the liquid line, we have 80 degrees. So we have maybe like half a degree, like one or half a degree of subcooling right now, and that's after adding 13 ounces. So that means that this system was really, really low on refrigerant. Let's also check the total superheat. And so on the vapor line, we're measuring 53, so 53 minus 38, and so we have about 15 degrees of total superheat. So what has happened here is all that refrigerant that we added in did not end up in the outdoor coil yet. Uh, what's happened is we've added the refrigerant in and now the TXV has a solid column of liquid heading to it. So now we have fully liquid heading into it and the TXV is letting more refrigerant into that indoor coil, which means our total superheat is lowering down so all the refrigerant we just added in is basically running in that indoor coil presently. So now that our, our total superheat is closer to being accurate, our subcooling should increase as we add refrigerant. So what's really happening is as we add the refrigerant, if our total superheat is correct, what's going to happen is the, the refrigerant traveling through that outdoor coil once it turns into a completely liquid state, it's going to make more passes through the tubing, which is going to allow it to lower in temperature, and that's how we get our subcoil. So in that outdoor coil, it starts off coming off of the compressor as a high pressure, high temperature discharge gas. It's the hottest and highest pressure uh, in the whole system, and then it goes into that outdoor coil. And then what happens is it lowers in temperature until the refrigerant becomes saturated, where liquid and vapor both exist in the middle of that, of that coil. And basically the refrigerant um, holds the temperature steady as it phase changes, basically from a vapor to a fully liquid state. And then once it gets down, say, to the lower part of this coil, it's in the fully liquid state, makes more passes through the coil as air is crossing that coil, and it lowers the temperature. And so that's how we get our, our subcooling which is the, the lowering of the temperature of the liquid refrigerant. That's the basically the definition of subcooling. And the definition for total superheat is the increase in temperature of the vapor refrigerant. And so you always want to remember that even though we're measuring total superheat out here, it's actually happening at the indoor coil, and we're measuring subcooling here, and that's happening at the outdoor coil. So we have 20.8 ounces in so far, and once again, you would not be adding refrigerant this quickly in the field. I, I know how much I pulled out of this system, and so I just want to show you what it looks like as we're doing it. Uh, but I'm going to stop right there. We're at 22.4 ounces, and I'm going to give the refrigerant a chance to cycle through the system. But if we were to look at our subcooling right now, just say, uh, our our for today's saturated temperature is about 84 degrees, so 84 minus 79 and a half, and we have four and a half degrees of subcoin. So our subcoin is increasing because our sat temp is rising, and uh, this is rising as well, but eventually it's going to be a spread between the two, and we'll have a higher subcoin. So I'm going to let this sit for about another four or five minutes, and then we'll come back to it again. Been about four or five minutes so far, and we take our pressure, we bring it into the saturated inner ring for R4 tonight. And we have about 84 degrees, 84 minus 78, we have about six degrees of subcooling. And we need to be within plus or minus three degrees of our target up on the rating plate, but I like to be about, say, one degree higher than our target subcooling. And let's also check our superheat. Um, that shouldn't have changed, so. That should be pretty close to where it was before. So we have 37 degrees as our saturated temperature here. We have 52 here. And so we have about 15 degrees of total superheat. So that's about right. That's what the TXV should be holding. Maybe about, say, 8 to 14. It's a, just a hair high. Uh, but uh, now we're going to add a little bit more refrigerant into this. So I'm going to start monitoring this a little closer now. And anytime that you're adding a large amount of refrigerant, the other thing that you can do 
is if you don't see the system reacting like you, like it should, say with the subcoin increasing, what you may want to do is turn the outdoor unit off and then let the indoor fan continue to run and then basically let the pressures equalize and then turn that outdoor unit back on. And uh, when you do that, when you add a lot of refrigerant, you may have to do that in order to actually see the subcoiling and the, and the total superheat change. So we are at about 85 degrees saturated temperature and 77 and a half. So we got about, about 7.5 degrees of subcoiling presently. I'm gonna keep adding some more. At some point here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually shut off this, this hose right here and try to empty this, this yellow hose of liquid uh, once we get a little closer to our charge level. So we're at about 86 and 77.4. We are getting close. Remember that the only reason that we're measuring pressure on air conditioning systems is literally to convert it to saturated temperature. So that's really all you're looking for is the saturated temperatures and the line temps. Not necessarily the pressures. People ask, hey, what are the normal operating pressures for our R22 and R410A? And it's basically, you know, it's a large range. You know, say it's 32 to 55 degrees is a saturated temperature. And, and so they're looking for this range, but it doesn't help you in order to set the charge accurately. You need to check the total superheat and the subcoil. I'm going to give this a few minutes and then I'll, I'll check the refrigerant charge again. It's been about four or five minutes again and so, so we have our, our pressure on our outer ring converted to our saturated temperature for R4 tonight is 87 degrees. We take 87 minus about 78 and we have about 9 degrees of subcoiling. So at this point right now, I'm going to shut this, this right here, and I'm just going to charge a liquid that's in this hose, and that's it. So this way, when we disconnect from the bottle, all we'll have left in here is vapor at the same pressure that's in the, the blue hose, which is on the large vapor line. So that's that. So it's been about a minute of runtime now since we charged the refrigerant that was in this yellow hose into the system. And so now we have a saturated temperature over here of 87 degrees. And we still have a, a temperature on the line of 77 and a half. And so we have about 9.5 degrees of subcoiling. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna shut this valve right here. And I've disconnected this. So now we have our, our liquid line right here. This one's full of liquid as well. So we're gonna charge that into the vapor line. And so we wanna make sure that this handle over here at the tank is still shut. And what we can do, since this is disconnected, we can open up this handle. It's gonna allow the liquid refrigerant that's in this side over to here, and then we can charge it in a little at a time. And so we're not gonna be able to check subcooling now uh, but we know that we're basically right at about where we need to be. So we should be at about 10 degrees of subcooling uh, presently. And that's it. So this system up on the rating plate has about 7.25 pounds of refrigerant total included with the 15 foot with a line set. Uh, and so we added in 37.8 ounces so that's quite a bit all right now i'm going to shut this handle over here and as soon as we disconnect here you want to put the cap back on because you don't want humidity condensing onto the inside of that port in this case i'm just going to put the regular uh, port cap on but if it's in an accessible area where these uh, ports are located at, you have to put locking caps on them. Uh, but that's it. So in our gauge right now, in our hoses, we just have vapor refrigerant. And so that can be vented and we don't have any liquid in there. So that's, that's good. So that follows a de minimis rule. And so that's how you do it. 
make sure that your tank handle right here is off before you disconnect this. And so now we're good. If you want to learn more about this subject of refrigerant charging or troubleshooting, make sure to check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. So we have full chapters on charging and recovery. We've got checking the refrigerant charge. We've got service valves. We've got pressures and temperatures. We also have troubleshooting of air conditioning systems and systems that are poorly designed and basically what you're going to do about that, troubleshooting low airflow problems. So there's a lot to, to learn and check out. So we have the full outline over at acservicetech.com and we also have our quick reference polystyrene cards. They hold up really well. You can throw them right in your service bag and uh, you can use them right, right here when you're charging and troubleshooting. So we have both of these products available over at acservicetech.com and we also have them over on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.